Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to day three of the Shelf ECGI Conference on Sustainable Finance and Corporate Governance. My name is Dong Yan, and I'm a faculty member here at the Swedish House of Finance at the Stockholm School of Economics. I will be moderating the sessions today. Uh, we have four very interesting papers, followed by a keynote speech by Harrison Holm. Uh, before we start, let me uh, quickly remind you about the ground rules for the session. Uh, so each paper has, each presenter has 30 minutes. Each discussant has 10 minutes, except for John, who will discuss two papers in 15 minutes. So the remaining five minutes will go to the presenter for responses. And if we have time left, we'll take some questions from the audience. So there is a Q&A function in Zoom. So please use that to add your questions for the speakers. Lastly, the keynote speech is 40 minutes. So I will interrupt uh, everyone uh, uh, to remind the presenters about time. I apologize uh, for that in advance. All right, uh, thank you everyone. And I hand over to our first presenter, Zahi Bendele from Ohio State. Uh, he will talk to us about exporting pollution where do multinational firms emit CO2. Zahi, the floor is yours. Right, thank you so much. Um... And early morning here on Sunday in uh, Columbus, Ohio. So uh, greetings to everybody. Um, so, um, uh, okay, so our paper is called uh, Exporting uh, Pollution, Where Do Mul Multinational Firms Emit CO2? And this is joint work with uh, Yijin uh, Zhang, who is a uh, account in uh, the audience, I believe. Uh, Stephanie might be also here and uh, Michael. Uh, Michael uh, V from um, um, uh, Erasmus and uh, Oxford. All right, uh, and I should uh, mention also that uh, uh, the views here are not um, uh, reflecting uh, Michael's um, employer, which is a Hermes um, investment company. All right, so um, let me just jump in. Oh, I'm, oh I should uh, share my screen, I guess. It's, it's, it's early in Ohio, as yeah. I said. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, let me see whether, whether this works. Works? Yep. You guys see? All right, yep. fantastic. Perfect. So just take a moment to be impressed by the background here. Um, all right. Um, so, all right. Okay, so the paper is about carbon leakage uh, by multinational firms. So uh, just to kind of set the stage a bit, um, different countries have uh, different environmental policies. And what we will be interested in doing here is looking at uh, firms uh, uh, who are, that are multinational, meaning that um, they have operations uh, across uh, different countries and explore uh, where uh, their uh, CO2 emissions are. Now, um, um, why uh, multinationals? Well, multinationals are, are the largest economic players in terms of um, corporations. Um, if you look at, the, just as an example, in 2017, 50% of um, um, uh, the cross-border investment by um, uh, multinationals was about 50% of GDP of OECD countries. So th this is this is substantial. And they also have existing infrastructure. So um, responding um, could be uh, just easier for them. You know, if you're just a local firm, you know, um, doing something with your um, uh, with your pollution activities is, uh, is more difficult for them. It's easier to, to shift uh, if, if they wanted to uh, shift activities, um, it's cheaper. And finally, uh, their activities are, are easy to observe. These are um, um, oftentimes or most times um, public companies, uh, they, report as I, I, uh, they report their emissions um, as I will discuss in a few moments. Now, um, so what, what, what do we um, kind of going uh, kind of more deeply in, into the paper? We're going to use a, a novel a panel data set uh, that reports at the level of firm country year uh, their CO2 emissions. So for each country, think about the country that works in uh, yeah, firm 
that operate in uh, 10 different countries, we will know in each country how much they emit. And also the emission is going to be, the CO2 emission is going to be on several um, categories as I, I will discuss in a few moments. And basically we'll, we'll, we'll try to answer how important are the home versus foreign uh, environmental policies. Now, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll preempt some of my uh, discussants um, um, comments right off the bat. Uh, this is not about um, um, randomized experiment or any um, you know, clever identification um, in terms of um, a rule change or uh, we're not going to have, we're going to have just slight, slightly flavor of this but it's going to be more a broad brush mapping. I mean, when we got access to the data, we kind of said, you know, um, sometimes, you know, when you look at, at these rule changes, you, you see kind of maybe the trees, but you don't see the wood. And, and we were interested in kind of just broad brush mapping, just, you know, is there any correlation? Are, are, are they, just, just to understand what were um, the big picture in, 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 in pollution. Maybe we could say something as, as, as economists there. So just to kind of um, um, what we are going to look at, we're going to look at a push versus pull. This is going to be, I think, a, one, of, one of the more interesting uh, results here in terms of um, our um, is stricter a environmental policy at home pushes you away or are there like uh, enticing countries that you want to emit there and and their uh, lax environmental policy actually pull you uh, uh, to their country um so we'll talk about uh, supply chains and maybe we'll be able to say something about corporate governance and industry characteristics um but uh, as you will see there are, there are a few caveats there all right, uh, so just to kind of quickly summarize the, uh, the findings, um, I think that you know, there is substantial evidence of carbon leakage, meaning that firms that are headquarters in countries with strict policies uh, actually pollute less at home, at their home country, more abroad. And there is also outsourcing, there is evidence, and again, it's going to be a bit caveated, but there, are, uh, there is evidence of outsourcing polluting activities along the um, upstream basically to um, um, to suppliers um, and pollution is going to pollution abroad export we call exporting pollution is going to be um, higher when there is a bigger uh, environmental policy gap between the home country and the poor country um, we also find that when 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 you have a stricter um, a domestic environmental policy uh, firms pollute less in total, but this effect seems to be kind of minor. And, and again, it's going to be a bit uh, um, a caveat in this result. Um, we talk about push versus pull. So strict domestic policies seem to push uh, away pollution to other countries, as opposed to kind of pulling by foreign countries. If you think about third world countries, it's not, we don't see a lot of pulling by um, offering convenient um, 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 policies for, for pollution, but rather it, it's the home country that's crucial. And finally, there might be some uh, something, some association, again, going to be coveted with about governance and, and um, pollution intensive industries. But, but I'm, I should say, we don't find there is a material results for um, pollution intensive industries. Um, Okay, let me start with the data. So we're going to have um, emission a, a data per firm, per country, per year on three levels, or actually two level and, and, and the third one is, is going to be more. But the two levels are scope one and scope two. Scope one are basically emissions uh, being used directly by the firm. So the firm has a, in, in, in manufacturing facilities, how much do they emit straight from these um, these facilities? It includes also a travel. It includes also a, 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 any activities that the firm does. Scope two is the um, emission being done by the uh, electrical and heating comp 
companies. If they use some uh, some uh, third party, well, most firms use third party electricity, um, how much emission is done in this process? So these are, these are kind of indirect energy being used to uh, emission, uh, emi pollution emi uh, that was done during uh, um, this electricity. So it's going to be, for example, different uh, firms will report different um, emissions if they used electricity coming from uh, solar and wind power as opposed to um, fossil fuel, depending on their um, um, electricity supplier. And finally, so so these these two are going to be at the firm, country, year level. Finally, we know also for some of the firms, for about forty percent of the firms. Um, for a, a subset of the years, we know information. We have information about scope three. Scope three is kind of going beyond. It's, it's basically a, about the inputs, about the emissions that were used in your inputs, about a business travel, it's about commute, and all these kind of um, even more remote uh, activities. We have uh, information there only at the global level. So for each firm. We will know. So, say Apple, we will know what's the total uh, amount that they uh, emitted in scope three uh, in a particular year, but not broken down by by um, the country. All right. So the data comes from a, a CDP carbon disclosure project. So these are basically a voluntary um, questionnaires that are being sent uh, to public firms. And uh, the reason that public firms uh, spend time and, and, and money responding to these and, 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 and they try to make it accurate is because these are used by institutional uh, investors. And this, the CDP database is basically makes its, its living from selling this data to institutional investors who care about ESG. Some of the data um, is actually audited, and we have, as, as part of our robustness, uh, we just run the main results for the uh, audited subsample, and, and the results are, are very similar. Okay, so we, we have um, emissions to um, nearly 2,000 uh, public firms across the globe. Uh, they are um, headquartered in 40 home, 48 uh, home countries, and uh, they operate in uh, 200, over 200 uh, foreign count, uh, countries. Um, let's see if my daughter yells there. Imar Obobait. The survey, uh, the years for the survey are 2008 to 2015. And we have information at the um, term country year, as I mentioned, for scope one and scope two. For about 40%, we have information for scope three at the global level firm, uh, uh, firm year, but only for five years. Now, there, there is another issue with scope three. Scope three um, is less standardized, so firms seem to kind of include different things sometimes in scope three. So the results that I'll show you with scope three have this caveat that we feel less confident about them, but you know this is the, the best the best we have. So this is one one kind of uh, important data set that we use. The second component is the uh, environmental regulation uh, index that comes from the World Economic Forum, and basically it has uh, two components. One is about stringency of um, environmental uh, policies, and the second one is enforcement. We combine these both, and they are highly correlated, of, of, as you can imagine. We combine them to a single score, which we call SEER, um, which is a, an acronym. Um, and basically, higher means stricter. So both, it's going to be a, a, a multiplication of these uh, uh, two individual scores. Um, and uh, just to get a kind of an idea about how, how the data looks, uh, what you see here on the right are basically um, the average uh, fraction of this account, like our, our main result, uh, the average uh, fraction of foreign emissions out of your 
uh, global um, uh, global emissions um, per country as a function of zero. So what you could see is that um, on the left you have the low environmental policies, um, firms that are headquarters in Russia, India, Turkey, China, Colombia, Thailand, etc., are a, emit a pollution, a, emit CO2 more at home as opposed to abroad. As you move to the right, you, you get to the uh, more OECD countries. Um, you know, we can see there are Japan, New Zealand, Finland, Germany, uh, the US is also some, somewhere here, US is four only. Um, so uh, for these countries, they emit more uh, abroad. Now, obviously, this is just you know, just summary statistics. In our regressions, we 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 have controls for the um, um, for for GDP, etc. Et I'll detail in a few moments. But but the relation um, this relationship actually is is, is conserved in, in, in regressions. Um, I'm not sure whether this slide is is optimistic or not. If you look at uh, the difference in our environmental regulation score between 2008 and 2015. Um, you know, it's uh, changed but a, a bit. Okay. Um, all right. So our first uh, set of results, uh, basically looking at um, you know, the, basically the, the the relation that I showed you in in, in this chart. Um, if we look at uh, how much uh, you emit, we're going to have different categories as you'll see in a moment. Uh, how, how much you uh, you emit as a function of your um, of your um, environmental regulation score uh, at your home country? Um, what we find is that firms that um, are headquartered in um, countries with strict environmental policy emit about twenty percent uh, less, both um, scope one and scope two. They emit much more, much. The effect is much larger, meaning they emit much less in uh, in their home countries, but emit much more in foreign countries. This is what, basically what you've seen in the um, in the univariate uh, chart before. Okay. Um, now there are controls in the background. Um, so basically, we, we control for the for the firm's um, size. The foreign asset uh, shares in some of the in, this variable is a bit missing, so so in some of the regressions and and um, uh, some country um, home country um, 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 variables like uh, um, the GDP and GDP for uh, per capita growth. There are also industry and uh, times year. Then we look at uh, global emissions. So the question we're trying to, to ask here is whether there is an association between uh, the environmental policies uh, at home and your overall global emissions. And we find that uh, uh, firms that are um, um, uh, uh, well, I, actually I showed you already that, that global emissions are, are lower by 20%. Sorry, it's, it's, it's too early here. Uh, in Colombo so higher. So we, we'll try to ask uh, the following question here in in in, in this analysis. We 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 have we know what happens in scope one, scope two that are kind of under the the control. Scope one is is directly in, under the control of uh, of the firm. Scope two is is more um, uh, is, you know is a direct input in a way electricity, right? Uh, scope three is about uh, your your suppliers, your uh, business travel, or things are kind of more remote. They, you have discretion, but it's somebody else. Somebody else is who pollutes. Um, may not be under, um, you know, if, if I buy some inputs coming from a different country, uh, it's not, even if in my country there is a, a strict environmental policy, it's not going to uh, uh, be um, a, a, taken against my, my own company. So if so, the question is, what we're trying to ask is, do firms in, in strict countries, countries with strict environmental policies, outsource more environment in, in these kind of activities? 
So um, as, I, as I told you before, scope three is available only at the global level and only for some of the firms. So the first thing that we do is, is we just repeat our uh, earlier global emissions um, a regression uh, for this subset of firms for this subset of years. And what we find is that in, this is what you see here in the first column. For this subset of firms, they use less of scope one um, emissions, about 24% before it was 20%. So they, they emit less at home. Now the question is, do they substitute along the uh, supply chain? So we look at so scope three and there is a positive yet insignificant effect of substituting away. So they use slightly statistically indistinguishable than, uh, than zero, than zero um, more pollution in, in, along the, um, the supply chain. When we combine scope one and scope three, kind of asking, okay, overall, do they move, they, do they substitute their own activities with um, scope three? We find that the global emissions for these firms is actually halved than what we would estimate or what would look like if we just looked at their direct activities. So it seems that there is a bit of a pushing some of your emission or towards um, firms up, upstream the supply chain. Okay, so um, we try to, to uh, take advantage of the fact that we see where, where they emit. So, so we're going to look at, at the gap between the environmental policies at home versus the entire globe or all other countries. So we're going to, to ask, are you going to emit a, more in, a, abroad when the policy gap is bigger? And this is what we find. We find that firms um, uh, are more likely to emit in foreign countries when the gap, the, um, the policy gap between the home and the foreign country is larger. We talk about a couple of economic mechanisms. The first one that I think is, is, is the most um, interesting and, and, and uh, important is the push versus pull. So if, if you think about, kind of, so, so far I, I've, I've shown you associations, right? I mean, these were correlations, um, you, you um, th there is a good reason that there are some uh, omitted variables that we haven't um, controlled for, um, and that's the nature of, of the data. And, and, and um, right. so, so these are associations. The question is, can we say a bit more about whether firms, uh, whether countries actually push firms out by? Is it, is it the, the uh, strict policy in the home country that pushes firms to pollute out or are these um, foreign countries that actually pool, uh, provide a convenient uh, environmental policies so that firms come to them, right? And, and, and you have um, in, in the environmental economic literature, uh, the theoretical one, you, you have, um, proposal for both mechanisms. So what we're going to do here is to use the Kawaja and, and, um, and Mian um, 2008 uh, framework. So the idea is that uh, because we um, because we have this interesting data structure of um, firm country year, we can actually try and control for um, basically hold constant uh, the policies of, of my, um, my home country per year and ask, does the variation in foreign countries policies matter for firms headquartered in, in my year and, and vice versa for the, um, for the um, it, um, foreign firms. So let me let me just sh sh show the results and, and, and hopefully it will be clearer. So what I'm, what we're asking here, for, uh, we're looking at, at the push effect. Do firms actually uh, do countries push away 
uh, domestic firms to, to pollute um, elsewhere. And so here's what we do. We look at the left-hand side, in these regressions is basically how much you, you emit in foreign countries. And we're going to control, we're going to have fixed effects for foreign country times here. Okay. So the variation is going to come and, and we're going to, to, to uh, control also for a uh, home country fixed effects. So the variation is going to come actually from um, variation over the years in your home country. Okay, so we're holding the home country fixed. We're holding all the foreign country times year fixed. So the variation comes from the variation here in, 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 the, uh, in the environmental policies at home actually come from a time variation in your home country. And when we what we find is that as this variation, as the environmental policies at home increase, there is you basically you send out more of your um, pollution outside. So this is what we call the push effect. When we look at the pull effect, we find no evidence. So the the pull effect is going to be the reverse exercise. We're going to um, fix the home country and year policies and ask, does the time variation in foreign uh, countries, in the policies of foreign countries, actually matter for firms that are um, housed in, 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 in the home country? And we find basically no effect. It seems that um, what's going on here is that it, it, it's about the uh, we also look at governance, okay, which is governance. Um, what we find is that there is a negative association. Uh, I should say, the, the, how do we measure governance? We basically use what institutional investors use. It's, it's a Thomson Reuters asset for database. And we use just the overall government governance score, which basically is supposed to measure whether a management acts on behalf of long-term investors or generate investors, a investor long-term value. And we basically ask to do firms that are above the, the median, um, that is there a differential effect in terms of um, a CR, in terms of the environmental policies. And what we find is that basically compared uh, to, to compare above the median, below the median, uh, they emit less at home and slightly less in, in foreign countries. Now, Sorry, Lahi, you have five yes. minutes left. Uh, five minutes is lots of time. Uh, thank you. Um, so uh, what we see here is that basically uh, when there is a strong governance um, uh, policy, they emit less at home. Obviously, this is open to reverse causality because this measure uh, is uh, based on, on you know, the, include, includes also how you, uh, what's your uh, emission policy, it's an ESG measure. Uh, but what's interesting is that it is focused on the home emissions. If you, even if you believe the, re, if you think it's a reverse causality, it has a different effect. Um, it's much more uh, impacted by the home as opposed to the foreign uh, emissions. So maybe there is, a, if you believe in the reverse causality, then it's maybe even a story of, of a window dressing. You know, at home, uh, you emit less, but you actually kind of, you know, you, you don't care that much about a foreign emission. You care, but not as much. The third, uh, the third and last mechanism that we test, but we don't, don't find very um, interesting results is, is basically look at pollution intensive industries. So these are industries that based on, on just, uh, e these are EU uh, statistics, uh, emit, uh, generate the, the, the highest emission um, per, per uh, their activity revenues or, or assets. So what you could see here is that, um, so, so basically, basically what, what we do, we just look at, you know, it's quite, um, um, 
you see that the first six are are really you know taking most of the pollution compared to other industries. So the idea was you know if 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 you're trying to design a policy that somehow targets CO2, and um, you may want to start with the big polluters. I mean, there is little, um, you know, if, if you have uh, some, uh, if you if you look at the, the bottom one, a uh, repair of motor vehicles uh, or, or, or trading uh, uh, motor vehicles, you know, just these are just, a, 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 you know, just selling cars. Maybe there isn't much to do there. Which is, these are just parking lots with cars. Uh, you may want to put your your um, efforts in, in in the big polluters, for example, refineries or or, or air, air travel. And what we find is that if we look about uh, at uh, firms in in the pollution intensive industries, basically they pollute more, but basically they pollute the same in home or pollute more the same, in the same uh, degree in in home and foreign. So we don't see a lot of um, much of response or much of variation with respect to the uh, environmental uh, policies with respect to home or or foreign. Okay, so let me just uh, wrap up here. So, um, so I, we think that there is uh, bad news in the sense that there is carbon leakage is 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 real. Uh, but there is evidence about uh, more foreign pollution, more upstream pollution. Uh, we we like a lot the the, the idea of pushing. Um, no, no, we don't find any evidence for for pulling. And maybe there is a, a bit of a good news that maybe strict policies uh, are associated with a lower global emission. And the um, the overall message is that uh, we need. Uh, more collective action because it's 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 almost like uh, you, you have to somehow um, a, you know put having stricter policies at home alone is not going to help. It's just going to push it away. And then I I found for you this um, it's kind of the message in uh, you know if you, if you do what's in the bottom left you're going to get less pollution. Okay. This is what I had for you guys. Right. Thank you very much, Dahi, for the presentation yeah. on Sunday morning. Um, yeah. The discussion this Paris Stromberg from Stockholm School of Economics. Per, you have 10 minutes. Great. Uh, let's see. So, uh, great. So, um, well, thanks to the organizers for uh, letting me discuss this bit. Um, thanks, myself. Okay. So, um, I think this is obviously a very uh, uh, important uh, uh, policy issue, as um, you know, the problem with uh, with climate change is that uh, you know it doesn't matter where you emit your CO two; it has an identical effect on climate change. So um, even if we in Sweden uh, have uh, you know um, very strict carbon tax and so forth. Um, you know, if the Swedish companies just move their manufacturing to uh, some country where, you know, where they can pollute without paying tax, you know, we have basically no effect on, on the climate change. So this is what <clears throat> is referred to as um, carbon leakage. Okay, so this uh, paper is basically trying to um, find evidence uh, of uh, carbon leakage. Okay, um, so um, Zai went through uh, all the results. Uh, I don't think I need to spend so much time on these, but um, but basically the um, you know one of the challenges here is uh, obviously has to do with data. Um, they um, use these um, CDP data, where which I, I assume are, are basically driven by um, it's firms report how much CO2 they emit, and the reason they do it is basically driven by investors. So this is publicly firms. Uh, public firms that are, are sort of disclosing the CO2 emissions and then I guess investors use them to decide you know uh, where they want to invest to take into account in ESG and their policies. So what uh, and then they combine this with um, data on how strict the policy is which is from the WEF or World Economic Forum survey um, and then financial data and then what they basically find is that um, you know if you uh, increase the 
strictness uh, of your domestic climate um, regulation, you see a drop of 29% in your home country emissions, but you see an increase of 43% in your uh, foreign emissions. So this is basically a carbon leakage uh, indication. And um, you see a drop, a slight drop overall in your total emissions. Um, and then there are various uh, other results that uh, Zahi uh, went through. Um, so uh, I guess, you know, one of the questions probably, you know, um, you have at least I had just initially okay is it uh, is it good news or bad news because on the one hand um, you know you do see a net uh, effect on total emissions of domestic policy so maybe you could actually declare victory there and say even if this is a global problem it actually does matter what you do in your home country because there isn't at least complete uh, carbon leakage um, on the other hand there seems to be quite a bit of carbon leakage okay um, now um, to my comments here, um, one thing that I think we uh, need to think a little bit about is what we mean with carbon leakage and how it's measured um, in the paper. So I think the, the at least one sort of very intuitive way to think about carbon leakage is, okay, so I start, um, you know, there's two countries here, okay, so um, I have um, some dirty uh, establishment and I have a cleaner establishment at home. Um, you know, here's my uh, um, my production facilities, maybe, and my sales facilities, and then my home country tightens CO2 policy. Okay, so um, to avoid whatever CO2 tax, I just move my dirty production to a country that doesn't has more lax policies, and I really haven't reduced total emissions um, a lot. Okay, so this is sort of what we're what we're after uh, in the paper, and I guess the the results, some of the results, are consistent with this behavior. However. Um, there are other things that could um, happen as well. Okay, so take the following example. So remember that the 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 dependent variable, what we're looking at here, um, is um, you know one of the variables look, looked at at least is percent of emissions that you do abroad. Okay, so take the following situation. Okay, before emissions, you know, a dirty establishment, both home and abroad. I'm a multinational. After uh, tightening, I clean up my domestic, um, you know, establishments, um, you know, where I have, sort of have to do it because I'm facing carbon tax, for example. I don't do anything to my foreign ones. Okay, so at least in one of the measures they're using, percentage foreign emissions would go up in this case, but I wouldn't probably call this carbon leakage because I actually have reduced my, uh, my domestic uh, emissions. Now, you could say, well, but uh, you know, they also look at total emissions. Um, but then you have another issue, I guess, which is um, take, take this, uh, this issue. It's same thing as before, OK? So after this tightening of regulation, I clean up my domestic um, businesses. And the firm is also at the same time growing, OK? So here you would actually have um, kind of a both the percentage and the amount of foreign emissions going up, um, but I'm really becoming a cleaner company. Okay. So it's gonna be very important to sort of control for, for, for these things. I think more um, generally, um, you know, people in, in uh, or researchers in, in uh, environmental economics have thought quite a bit about how to um, so think about changes in, in emissions, uh, just copied an equation from a paper by Levinson. Um, so, you know, if you think about, about, the, about total pollution for a given firm, okay, you can think about that as, let's say they have uh, um, establishments in a couple of different countries. Okay, so you could decompose this basically into this last um, thing here, which, oops, sorry, uh, which is, you know, it depends on your total scale and how much you're, you know, how big you are. It depends on uh, how much you're producing relatively in different countries. And it depends on how pollution intensive your uh, business is in these different countries or industries or whatever, right? So you could increase emissions because you grow, because of scale, uh, conditional on scale, you could uh, change because of different composition across countries, across uh, business lines. And you could, and this, I guess, is what we're after. Uh, if we want to get a cleaner world, you could reduce 
conditional on composition and scale, you could actually reduce emissions because you use better technology. And in the paper currently, I'm a little sort of confused about which one of these uh, it is, right? So if you find that the foreign emissions increase, is it because you move dirty production abroad, which is, I guess, what we would call leakage? Or maybe you're growing faster in countries that where you know where you happen to have dirtier um, divisions. Okay, so then I don't know if we call that leakage or not. Maybe you chose to invest more in those countries, in which case maybe we can call it leakage. But maybe it's just because that market grew faster. Um, or um, you know you could actually be improving your technology more at domestic plants, plus you grow overall, which was the last example I showed in the picture, and that I definitely wouldn't call leakage. Okay, so I think I would push the authors to try a little bit to think about uh, um, decomposing the effects uh, in this way. Now, one of the challenges, and I'm very sympathetic, by the way, that this is, uh, you know, you have the data you have, and the data is interesting, but it's not perfect, and you can't do a perfect sort of identification, you know, QG type uh, exercise here. Uh, however, let, let me just point out some things that um, are a little uh, problematic. So. These surveys, the, the, the emission data comes from these surveys that uh, are basically um, pushed for by, um, by investors, as I understand it. The coverage has increased a lot over time. Okay, so this is really a very highly unbalanced uh, panel. Um, it's very unclear to me how the composition, you know, to what extent these, these decreases in, in, uh, uh, in emissions uh, on average come from different industries being included, different countries being included versus actually uh, reductions. Um, and then if you look to the right, you know, even if you had a panel, there isn't so much going on, at least if you look at the averages of changes in policy over time. So there's not a ton of power in, identity in doing sort of a, a diff and diff, even if you had a perfect panel here. So I think doing a proper diff and diff here is challenging and, um, that also means that these regressions can't have firm fixed effects in it. You try to do the best you can to control for, for you know, uh, firm characteristics and so forth. But we're not talking about within firm changes necessarily in these tests. Um, Sorry, Per, you have uh, one minute left. One minute, okay. So then um, I do think that, that this is sort of along the same lines. I think we're, interested in emission intensities here? Are you sort of um, investing in using better technology? Um, uh, is there, you know, so trying to, to do more on that, I would encourage you uh, to do. Um, I think you're, you, you know, you mentioned scope one, two, and three uh, emissions. I think the scope one emissions is really the one that's sort of informative in this exercise about what the firm is doing. Scope two, you have a problem. That's basically the energy you're using. It could simply be that uh, if you have a change in policy in the country, that affects actually the utility firms and what kind of electricity they offer, which will then change the, um, the scope two emissions of a given firm, but not because they did anything, it's because their suppliers uh, of electricity was, were forced to do stuff. Scope three in, is interesting in principle, but data is uh, very poor. Um, one thing to also note here is that your results that there is not much reduction in pollution intensive industries is a little sad because it turns out that the pollution intensive in industries, 7% of the firms here account for uh, more than 50% of emissions. So that we're not, no action in pollution intensive industries is actually pretty bad news. Um, Final thing here that I do think is somewhat important on these country um, firm year level regressions, there is a tendency of strict policy firms up here in the right hand corner to be quite small countries and a lot of the large countries, this is now emissions, but I think it correlates pretty well with the size of the market and the size of you know, sales in these, in these uh, countries. You see a lot of the big markets tend to be dirtier and a lot of the small markets tend to be clean. And that's a problem if you think about these, uh, um, you know, Sweden has a stricter policy. At the same time, if Swedish firms are growing, they kind of have to grow in these 
dirty countries because that's where they can sell stuff. So I think you uh, potentially could have some spurious relationships there. So anyway, that's um, my comments. Um, sorry for going over a bit. Uh, I really I think it's an interesting paper. I'm definitely on a very important issue. So I think the I would I had more patience with methodology since the issue is so uh, important. Um, and there are a lot of data limitations that restrict what you can do, but maybe there's some more things that you can do here. Um, final word is uh, think about colorblind people who can't uh, distinguish red uh, from brown like me. It's, uh, but anyway, that's what I had. All right, thank um, you, Per. So. Uh, Zahi, would you like to respond? And then we have some questions from the panelists. Maybe we can take those from uh, David. Yes. All right. So thank you very much, uh, Per. Uh, I well appreciated and and our uh, good comments. Uh, I, I don't have a, uh, an answer to all of them, um, but uh, it definitely uh, gave me some some ideas of other things we we could do. Um, uh, so for example, uh, you mentioned the um, the growth. Um, uh, maybe an even growth between domestic and foreign. So one of our variables that we have that we maybe could use is, is the percent of foreign assets. So maybe we could do something with that. Do you have um, sales by country or only assets? I, no, only assets. Okay, that's too bad. Because I guess um, the, 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 there's some interesting and I think we, between sales and assets. No, and, and I think in, in many of these, these are uh, the pro production facilities, you know, think about cars, right? I mean, so the production is, is done somewhere else, the assembly is, is the design is, I mean, each country has its own kind of... Yeah, so if you had country level sales as well as country level assets, you could actually directly see if it's due to outsourcing or manufacturing facilities versus just different sales in those countries. Yeah, I, I, as, as far as I know, we, we don't have this. Um, uh, probably there is something we could do to, to to check at least whether the unbalanced panel is is, is responsible. Uh, maybe there is something about a way weighting by by country, kind of evaluating, um, just to to check whether you know there is any anything spurious going on there. Um, yeah, but but these are I mean the, the 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 composition I think is 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 something that we we probably could do more, uh, and to some extent. We have, I think, we, we do have some results because we see the um, uh, the change in the domestic, the change in the foreign, and the change in the percentage. So we 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 could probably do more in terms of interpreting these results. Um, uh, there are some uh, questions uh, in the um, I see in the chat here. Yeah. Uh, do you so, want me to answer these or uh, what should I do? So I think David has a question. Uh, so maybe we can go with David's question first and yeah, then uh, maybe we take the other questions privately. Okay, hello everybody. So my question was, uh, so I mean that, that kind of leakage can happen within uh, multinationals, but I would imagine it also happens, you know, across firms. Like, you know, I'm, you know, having, a, you know, another firm I'm importing from. So instead of having my own factory that is dirty in my country, I will use, you know, another company to basically buy the, you know, which I'm going to buy the goods from uh, that is in a, you know, kind of in a dirty country. Or that is a dirty uh, uh, company abroad. Uh, and that you could, Check by using sort of the same data at the country level. No, if I'm at, if I'm in a country, uh, so is it the case that I see an increase in pollution in countries um, that tend to export to countries that have an increase in their regulation of environment or something like that? That would be like a sort of the same regressions yeah, as, the, yeah. as, the, as the one you run. So, so um, so we, we this is really the the scope three that we have. Uh, so the scope three is how much I, you know, the, the pollution that went into my inputs. Yeah, but you exactly could do it you using uh, other, uh, what I'm saying is that you don't even need your uh, WEF data, is what I'm saying. You could do it with, mm. you know, trade data. Right, and and and, and that, uh, so, so maybe there we should uh, we should do a better job in, in relating to the literature because the, the, with trade data, you know, it, we're not the first ones kind of thinking about this idea okay. of, Leakage, right? I mean, okay. there, there is the twenty-year. Uh, sorry, maybe I should should have again 
so, so th there is quite a bit of literature about a uh, carbon leakage, but the carbon, I should have done. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, the existing literature lo looks at exactly what it, it looks at FDIs, looks at trade imbalances. It's everything is at the aggregate level. There is nothing at the firm level. There is no mm. uh, firm level information. Okay. Uh, oftentimes, uh, CO2 is is um, you know, CO2 is approximated by the, the amount of you know a, a industrial output, for example, as opposed to kind of actually measuring CO2. So the advantage here is really the data. It's, it's CO2 and firm level that hasn't been before. I, I should have. It's 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 a bad. Um, but you still but, have but, an issue of, of, of sort of, okay, are you decreasing CO2 because you're sort of shutting down operations and, you know, we can't grow anymore. And then are maybe other firms picking up that slack and so forth, right? So that's, I think, is also along the lines. Depends a little bit on, on competitive pressure and so forth. If we kill off all the Swedish firms, uh, steel firms, and then uh, the Indian ones pick up the slack, have we really done much for climate and so forth, which I think these other, these other literature is also. Yeah, so, so I, you know, so maybe, maybe there is something more to do in the aggregate. Um, and then we, again, if we look at aggregate, we, the, the issue of un, unbalanced panel is really important because we're aggregating across different terms. Yeah. I mean, I, I, right. I need to figure so out how to address this. Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you very much.